Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome to my channel. I am excited to have you. Today's video is honestly way different from my channel because I normally am like positive, upbeat, like excited, and I do content that makes people happy. This one is just a little bit different because I'm focusing in on mental health and just the illness itself and kind of being open and honest with you guys about my journey and my struggles. I have said from the beginning of starting my channel that I wanted to do a mental health series, and honestly, I've only delayed it because of the fact that I felt like I needed to like plan out more versus just kind of like coming on camera but the more I thought about it honestly I feel like me myself having you know the mental health problems that I do gives me enough credibility to speak on the issue I've always told you guys from the beginning that I wanted to be open and honest and vulnerable with you guys about everything that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that's kind of part of letting people into your life and I feel like it's only fair to not just show my day routines that are exciting and like all the fun stuff I do and me shopping and getting ready it's also important to let you guys in on the struggles that I go through. I don't have to share everything with you guys and I'm fully aware that I don't have to completely be open and vulnerable and expose everything in my life and I don't but I also signed up for this. When I started a YouTube channel I knew that I wanted to be that person that's like down to earth and real and I didn't want to just be this you know persona that I have this perfect life. So with that being said I think that this is going to be the start of my mental health series and that just you know makes me excited because I feel like I can hopefully help some people and influence people and just make their days and lives and times dealing with mental health easier. So um, I appreciate you guys coming to support me and watching this video. If you enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed if you're not already. So first of all, I will say that genetics has not been on my side when it comes to mental health. Um, my mom is very open and honest about the fact that she has anxiety and depression both. My dad has really bad anxiety and depression as well. As far as them and where they get it, I know that kind of up the line of family members, we have anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder. We've had um, multiple multiple people in our family attempt to take their own life. Although that's not the only way you can have anxiety, depression, etc. It definitely doesn't help and it's definitely contributes in my opinion. So this is kind of like a mental health, you know, video, but it's also kind of a story time at kind of what triggered me last week as far as like my mental health goes. Of course, stressful situations are already stressful but when you have a mental health disorder it makes it like 10 times worse and so it's very hard sometimes to process your emotions and feelings. I am clinically diagnosed with anxiety, depression, and also a slight mood disorder. So basically I've had to spend time from high school on to now being 24 years old figuring out what that means, how to cope with it, um, and understand like what I need to do to be my best. It's taken a lot of trial and error, lots of different medications, you know, self-soothing techniques, seeing psychiatrists and different doctors. I didn't really start having any issues with mental health until I was in high school. I had my first panic attack when I was like 17 or 18. And kind of from then on out, I knew like I needed to get it figured out because it's like the worst feeling in the world. So I used to be on depression and anxiety medicine that I took every single day. I really didn't like the way that it made me feel and I just kind of got sick of doing it. So I took myself off of all of my medications and I tried to cope like that for a few years, which is just crazy to me that I even made it through that because I can't imagine like trying to do it all on my own again. Currently, I am only taking one medication, which is for my mood disorder. It kind of just helps me to keep my emotions under track. And I have luckily not had to take um, depression and anxiety medicine at all, which is a really big step for me. I think that it's completely okay if you want to try and, you know, cope with it head on and not take medications. I know that was my original goal, but it also doesn't work like that sometimes. And I think it's also completely okay to need and rely on additional help. I think that that's something, you know, you need to decide with your family, your doctors, your psychiatrists. So I will just say that starting out, like I am very pro whatever side of the spectrum you're on is what's best for you. So basically, I feel like I just have a hard time sometimes controlling my emotions. Like little things can trigger me to the point of feeling like my life is over, which is just super dramatic. And so um, that medicine has helped me just kind of stay on track and be able to handle things differently you know, like assess which stuff is really big deals and which stuff I should just kind of push under the rug. It's definitely been an ongoing battle, like I said, trying to figure out what works best for me, but I finally feel like I'm kind of leveled out and things seem to be going good. So I'll just start by saying that. I don't want to dig too deep into stuff that I want to bring up in later videos. So I'm kind of just going to move on with my story time and explain like the triggering session and how I had the, one of the worst weeks of my life. So I thought. So last week, it actually started out to be a decent week 
And then I had some things that kind of just set me off throughout the week, little things that weren't even that big of a deal. But you know, once you have like a list of things compiling, it feels like it's a lot bigger deal than it is. So that already didn't start off my week good. I kind of was just in a bad mood already, like groggy, just kind of feeling sorry for myself, you know, that kind of mood. And then Wednesday came along and it was literally the worst day ever. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. Basically that morning I needed to register my car. Um, I bought my car in March of 2019 to put into perspective and it is now July of 2020 and I still hadn't registered my car. So I hadn't paid my sales tax and my plates and tags have also been expired since October, which is completely irresponsible. Like I said, it's my own fault. I need to take responsibility for stuff like that. But of course I was like, oh, poor me. Like I have to go register my car and it's going to take forever. I'm going to be at the DMV. Firstly, I start by trying to go to the bank to pull out cash. The ATM isn't working. It's not letting me get cash out to register my car. It's just being difficult and not working working for me. And so I'm just getting frustrated. So then I'm like, well, I guess I'm gonna have to go through the drive through, which I don't like talking to people because I have this like anti engaging with people thing that gives me anxiety. I have really bad social anxiety, which you would not think from watching my YouTube channel. So it starts like that. And then I go through the drive through and the bank is closed. They don't open until 930, which at this point, it's only like 845. And I'm like, I got up early specifically to do this and get stuff done today. And here I am now this is just gonna set me back. Of course, that's not even that big of a deal. So I come home. And I'm sitting here like waiting and I'm just irritating myself because I'm having to sit and wait for the bank to open. I go back finally and the bank opens and they let me withdraw my amount of money that I needed to pull out. I get that going. Well, then I needed to go to my mom's house and get a piece of mail to prove that I still live at her house, which technically I don't anymore, but I did at the time that I registered my car. So I was still able to get the discounted percentage of sales tax because of the county she lives in. Basically, I went there to get a piece of mail and I was um, looking for mail and I I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find any mail with my name on it. So I'm searching for that. That's irritating me, just taking me off. So finally, I find a piece of mail and I'm like, okay. As I'm about to leave my mom's house, I get a call from my bank. Um, keep in mind, this is a different bank. I have two different banks because I'll explain. I have a student loan that I had to take out as a personal loan because I couldn't get approved for the financial aid I needed um, last year for school. So I have a personal loan. Well, I've had it for a year and been paying on it, but the time was only a year to pay it off and it was a pretty large loan, I wasn't able to pay it off in a year. So they called me and told me last week that I needed to, you know, reapply for another year so that I didn't have to pay it all off right now. I reapplied last week and they called me after I finally found this piece of mail saying that I wasn't approved for the loan. When I asked why, they said it was because my credit score had dropped 70 points. Completely like devastating news to me. I've been working to like build up and gain credit for so long. I've paid everything on time. Like I have a decent like track history with my credit. I was so confused and I literally had no idea what was going on. So I finally figured out what was going on with that and I think I'll be okay to raise it back up. But at the time I thought I was like screwed because it takes so long to gain credit. And anybody who knows when you drop your score, it takes a long time to get it back up. And so I basically at this point was like, well, my life's ruined. And so I'm like crying. I'm upset and you know it's just already been a really really bad day and that news like did not help obviously I'm trying to like calm myself down I finally am like okay just we'll figure it out later I need to go register my car that's what needs to be done right now and that alone just puts me in a bad mood because I don't want to register my car like I just don't want to do it so I go to leave my mom's house and I'm driving down the road and I kid you guys not I get in a car wreck I was right outside of my mom's neighborhood and I was just leaving um going on a straight street and this guy kind of like diagonally crossed from one county road to another county road across and I hit him. Um, he was going pretty fast, definitely speeding, but you know, you can't really prove that when it comes to insurance claims. So that was fun. So at this point, I'm like uncontrollably sobbing. Like I can't even barely talk to the guy at this point. And so I call my mom and I'm like, please calm down the road. I just got in a wreck. And so she comes down. I texted Braxton and was like, I got in a wreck and he's freaking out. So then he's calling me while well, I'm, I ran over to my mom's car and got in her car when she came down to meet me. And we were waiting for the cops and then I see Braxton pull up like he had just tracked me and you know knew where I was at and so he had came and met us and then yeah I'm sitting there just like I mean at this point my life's basically over right and so I'm in my mom's car having like a full-on like meltdown and I feel myself like getting ready to have a panic attack and my mom is like you need to calm down and she's like holding my hands like talking me through everything having the mental health issues that I do, it put me into like instant bad mode. You know what I mean? Like I just, it was bad mode, like not good mental health 
at all. Finally, my mom like gets me calmed down and I'm like, I don't even know like what to do at this point. And she's like, it's gonna be fine. Like we'll get it taken care of, we'll figure it out. I'm really blessed with like my mom and stepdad and dad have all really, really helped me financially. And you know, they've always taken care of things that I needed that have arisen. So I appreciate them for that. I don't know still right now whose fault the wreck is going to be. I think that it's gonna be more his fault than mine, but I don't think that they'll probably place full blame because he didn't have a yield sign or a stop sign. I end up just pretty much spending the day at my mom's house like moping around like Braxton went home and left and I just kind of drove my car to my mom's because I was like I don't really want to drive right now like I'm kind of flustered and like freaked out <laughs> My car has a lot of damage, like probably five to 7,000. So that in itself is just like, you know what I mean? Um, I'm still trying not to like really think about it too much just because it's like its own stress. So that's fun. So anyways, um, the rest of the day went like this. I'm at my mom's house and I'm trying to like get myself calmed down and under control. And I get a call from school and I had just completed my FAFSA last week because I didn't know I had to complete my FAFSA. Don't even get me started on that. Another thing that gives me anxiety to do and that I put off that shouldn't but um, I finally had done my FAFSA and I get a call from the people who are helping me with school this semester saying that basically FAFSA is auditing me and I have to turn in all of this stuff so I'm like what are they even talking about so I'm I'm on the phone with them I'm trying to get on my account for my school and I see a list of like six things that it says I have to do for school in order to go this semester and I'm like I don't even know what this stuff is and so I call the financial aid office at my school and they're like you have to have have your 2018 W-2s, your 2018 federal and state tax return. Um, you have to show income of this and this. And I'm like, I apparently am not too good at adulting because I had no idea that you needed to keep your W-2s. So I've already thrown away my 2018 W-2s. I have no idea where they are. I have my, my tax returns, but when I file my taxes, I do it online through Credit Karma and I don't get like a package. So I didn't really have anything. Like I don't have anything. So they basically are like, well, you're gonna have to call the IRS. You're gonna have to create an account online and get a wage transcript, which is a whole different conversation. I won't even explain what all of that is, but basically I go online to try and do this online through the IRS. It says it's the easiest way. And my account gets locked out. It says that it has fraudulent activity and that they can't prove that it's me. I had been trying to put in my car loan number or my student loan account number um, to validate who I was. And it was basically saying they had no accounts. Like it didn't match any accounts, which who even knows what that's about? I have no idea. So then finally, um, I'm just like hysterical at this point. I'm just like, well, now I'm locked out. So my mom's trying to help me and she calls the IRS. And basically the IRS due to COVID and everything right now is like, I guess running at like 25% capacity. They're not even like opening mail from people and stuff right now due to COVID. And they're like very understaffed. We requested an in-mail transcript to be sent to the house within five to 10 days. I have no idea if it's going to come or not because everything is so behind and it's kind of just a waiting game at this point. So I'm supposed to start school August 17th and it is August 3rd. I mean, I requested the transcript five days ago, but I don't even know if weekends count. So I, at this point, don't know if I'm going to be able to attend school for their fall semester, which is also just really disheartening and like depressing. But I am thankful that I've been able to go over the summer. And I feel like if it comes down to it that I can't go in the fall, there's a reason for that. Basically, that day was like not even being dramatic, probably one of the worst days I've ever had in my life. Like I'm not even being sarcastic or dramatic. Like I'm not kidding it probably really was since then I've like really leveled myself out and calmed myself down so normally I post videos Thursdays Sundays and Tuesdays well that happened Wednesday so Thursday I'm like well I'm not posting I don't have anything to post Sunday comes around and I still don't have anything to post because I'm like feeling sorry for myself and like moping it's now Monday but tomorrow this video will drop so I'm back on track that makes me happy I don't really have like a whole answer to this story or like what the point of me coming on here and saying this was but I guess my goal is to just tell you guys like it's okay to have bad days It's okay to feel like your whole world is ending But you have to pick yourself back up and like realize what's truly important at the end of the day My car wasn't totaled. Um, I have a boyfriend who loves me very much I have a family who helps me out financially when I need it and who supports me I have really amazing friends that have been there for me through the end I could have got paralyzed in this car accident or died You know, I could be thousands and thousands of dollars more in debt than I already 
am from school. There's some people that can't go to school at all and they have no way of even getting an education. So I'm blessed that I have the education that I have and that I already do have a degree. I'm blessed that I had enough money to be able to, to put back for my car and to register my car. Although it ended up costing me a lot more than I wanted it to. I registered it the next day and got that all taken care of. So um, I'm thankful that I was even able to do that. The DMV only took me 10 minutes to get in and out the next day. So that was good because I probably would have just like, I don't even know. It was a little bit of a rough week. A credit score. Yeah, it's, it's disheartening, but I've talked to a lot of people who have explained to me like kind of what happened with my credit score. And luckily like what has gone on with my credit score, I'm able to like fix pretty fast. And so they think within a couple months, like it'll probably raise back up to pretty much what it was before, or maybe even more because I have like a really good set plan now for, you know, what I want to do. And yeah, um, the whole credit score dropping thing sounds like it wasn't like as big of a deal. Like a normal person would probably be like, why is that such a big deal? Like you're young. I'm trying to get some stuff planned out and um, done right now. And I need my credit score to be good. So the thing is, is like, honestly, it's still a good credit score. So I shouldn't really be as, you know, devastated as I was. I had to kind of just come back to life for a minute and just realize like things could be a lot worse. And I'm thankful that they're not and mental health is just sucks like it really just sucks and I wish that I didn't have to have anxiety and depression and a mood disorder but at the end of the day like I do and I've had to learn to live with it um you guys are stronger than the battles and like obstacles that are put in your way and I know that you can get through them and I promise like it seems like it's the end of the world but I'm here to tell you it's not um Gosh, I really said I wasn't gonna cry, but it's fine. It's okay. The thing is, is like since last week having this like awful, you know, week, I've had some really, really good things happen. And I feel like God has kind of showed me like, hey, here's all this to be thankful for. I'm excited to share that stuff with you guys, but it's not like completely like in terms yet. And so I just am kind of waiting to, you know, tell you guys some new stuff that I have going on. I will say that there's one thing that like has happened to me in the last week that is going to completely like change my financial situation. And that makes me really, really happy. I'm so super excited and it was just kind of something I really needed right now to like bring me back to like my spirits. I don't know just I have some really good things like coming my way right now and I've had some good news and I got to do some fun things this weekend with my friend and it just puts things back into perspective you know you can sit and count all the bad things that happened to you it's a lot easier to do that than it is to like think of all the good things going on in your life or you know um, look at all your blessings, but I hope and challenge you guys this week that you guys are able to do that. And I don't know, I just pray that you guys all can take care of your mental health and, you know, do the things that you feel good about and that make you happy. Anybody that's like in a really dark place right now, I hope that you have some faith that it will get better because it always has. I can tell you I've been in some really, really dark and very scary times in my life where I wasn't really sure if I was going to make it through. And I think, you know, we all kind of know what what that means as far as mental health goes so I just want to tell you like it gets better I wouldn't have found like the love of my life I wouldn't have been able to start a YouTube channel I wouldn't have all the stuff that I have right now and the opportunities that I've had if I would have just given up and so I promise you like it really does get better eventually I know that it's it's really hard when it just feels like nothing is going right and you're in such a dark place but it does get better it really does get better and I'm just appreciative of the things that I have this week and I'm kind of manifesting some good things to come my way and just been hopeful and thankful for that. Life has a funny way of putting things into perspective and kind of checking you whenever you want to feel bad for yourself. So my goal for you guys is to just like write down stuff that you're thankful for this week and stuff that kind of gives you a reason to live and be happy. And yeah, I'm really thankful for you guys and your support and it means the world. And I'm also excited to start this mental health series. So if you guys haven't already subscribed, please make sure that you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I love you guys so much. I will see you next time and hopefully it's been a better week the next time. <laughs> Bye guys.